Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well today. My name is Juliet Uzel and you're most definitely welcome to my channel. I am very happy to have the very first sponsors of a video here on the channel, uh, a brand that I have used all my sewing years. I mean, from scissors to seam rippers to even measuring tapes, down all the way to denim making materials and supplies. They've all come from Prim. I mean, I just feel really humbled that I have a video, my first video here on the channel, sponsored by Prim. I will be sharing the things that I have here in the basket with you over a few videos that will be shared here on the channel. So what do I have here today? I have this Vogue V9075 dress that I am going to be making today in this video. So I have here this kit for making fabric covered buttons. So I'm challenging myself to somehow include buttons in this sewing pattern. This sewing pattern does not require buttons, but I think I'm going to figure a way to get buttons onto this dress. And uh, yeah, let's do this. I am going to go search through my stash and I will be back with you shortly. Here we are. It's, you can see that it's got holes in it. So I'm definitely going to be lining this, but I will be using this edge of the fabric um, for the hem, because I do not, I want to maintain this beautiful um, scalloped, it's got a scalloped um, edge. I think the best thing to do would be to have buttons along the shoulder seam. But then, uh, yeah, and I'll have to be very clever with the way that I cut out the fabric to cover the buttons so that it covers the entire um, area of the bare button. Right, let's start. Let's start.
hit a bit of a roadblock. The fabric that I have used has slightly bigger eyelets than I thought that they had. So what's happening now is the raw edges of the seam allowance on the inside of the main fabric would at some point fray and show through the eyelets. So the best thing to do now will be to finish the raw edges. And I have just switched over my threads here from green to red so that they match perfectly so they're hidden away so I will be finishing off those raw edges and then I would attach the lining to the neckline so if you find yourself in this sort of situation the best thing to do would be to stitch the main fabric and the lining fabric together when you're creating the seams but the only reason why I didn't do that was because we've got that shoulder seam that needs to be done in a certain way and that's the reason why I didn't create mine the way that I've just recommended but um, let's go ahead and I'll show you what I do to remedy this situation I'm making sure that I do not leave too much of a seam allowance there just so that um, there won't be much bulk beneath that seam when I turn this over to the right side. notice that I'm doing some unpicking and that's because I didn't really think too hard about how I was going to turn this inside out now if I if I pull this all the way I'll just have um, the fabric bunched all up inside so what I recommend is to think hard about how you're going to actually get your fabric inside out before you um, sew the lining to the main fabric so I'm just going to unpick it now and probably through the armhole I will um, turn the fabric the lining fabric inside so at this point I have undone the whole thing and re-sewn it but you'd notice that the armholes haven't been stitched together. I only stitched the front and the back necklines. So I had to go back, pin the armholes um, from the inside. <laughs> this is just long, but you'd see. I had to pin the armholes from the inside and then stitch from one shoulder seam down to one side seam and then I did the other side I had to do the reverse on the other side it was a bit longer but worth it in the end I must also mention how important it is to clip the corners and to snip into those curved edges just to make sure that your neckline and um, like front and back necklines and the armholes lay nice and flat but also <laughs> you have to understitch 
understitching is when you sew the seam allowance onto the lining or the facing just to make sure that what's on the inside does not show on the outside so you see me here under stitching onto the lining like i said earlier you have to take your time with these things but here we are taking my time to ease in those gathers just to make sure that they're evenly spread out i love how the gathers look <laughs> with all the those holes bunched up together they look quite nice but yeah so ensuring that they're gathered beautifully is so key and um, also on the inside i didn't bother gathering the ga the lining i just pleated them because they're much quicker and the lining it doesn't really have to be gathered. I mean, you can gather yours if you want. <laughs> I should have filmed myself at this point to show how disappointed I was when I searched through my stash to find that I had no red zippers, invisible zippers, but I finally got some in the post. These ones are much lighter. They're the lighter version of invisible zippers. And I think it's worth looking into for fabrics that aren't that heavy. I have a detailed video here on the channel but it was made <laughs> over two years ago on how I finish off invisible zippers and um, like the neckline and the lining so if you'd like me to do a much more detailed video and um, an updated one here on the channel let me know in the comment section and I'll make a video on how I do that
After stitching on my buttonholes, I decided to use this prim fray check liquid that I've had for the longest time to, you know, apply onto the buttonholes that were stitched before snipping into them. They have to dry first. It helps to make sure there's no fraying after cutting open your buttonholes. Also, I had to, you know, use the pen just to make a mark where the buttons would go. Hey, so I finished making my dress. I finished it off last night. Can you tell that this bothers me? You might not tell, but it really does bother me. I'll tell you the reason why it bothers me. It bothers me because I had the back of the bodice or the back bodice on top. I should have had my um, buttonholes on the front bodice. So this is me being transparent and open with you. So if you do decide to hack a sewing pattern like this, remember to have your buttonhole on the front bodice and not on the back bodice. Now, I did it on purpose because um, the front bodice was a bit narrower than the back one. I think it was from the back, from me hacking um, the neckline at the back, but it's okay. I mean, I have my ways around these things. I'm just going to tack this part down because I mean, this is not a closure. The closure is the, the invisible zipper. So I'm still going to be able to get in and out of the dress. As you know, here on the channel, I always say as it is and let you know what's worked and what's not worked. So you don't make the same mistakes as I have. I love the dress. I love the fit of the dress. I didn't want it to be too tight. I love the pockets. I love the fabric choice. And I love that the lining doesn't go all the way down to the hem of the dress, which means that it shows a bit of skin. If you want yours to show more skin, obviously make the lining shorter. But overall, I'm in love with this dress. I'm going to pair it with a beautiful, beautiful blazer that I bought recently. And that blazer has gold detailing on it. And I think that's just going to go nicely with the red. Um, I'm going to get my makeup done and make my way out for a special event I'm going to. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspires you to go that extra mile just to add your own personal touch to any sewing pattern you wish to create. And please do not forget to check out the products that I have mentioned in this video. Links to all the products will be in the description box below. Thank you so much to Prim for sponsoring this video. And please note that if you do not see a link to the products that I use in this video in the description box below, just note that there were products that I purchased way before this video and um, they might still be on the market. You can just do a quick search on Google and you'll find the products. But Prim has been my go-to. I recommend it all the time and I'm so grateful that I get to have a video here on my channel sponsored by them. Guys, I wish you could see my heart right now. I am so happy. My very first video here on YouTube getting sponsored. I hope this is the first of many to come and hopefully there'll be more brands that would work with me here on the channel just to give me something extra for the creative work that I do. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate your support here on the channel. I hope to see you in my next video. All the very best and take care. Bye.